How do you figure out the state of an element or compound? We need to know the states of elements and compounds because we need to identify their states in reactions. There are four main states, gas, liquid, solid, and aqueous. Aqueous means it's soluble in water and it only applies to compounds. All of these states will be written as subscripts next to their respective elements or compounds. Gas will be a lowercase g in brackets, liquid will be a lowercase l in brackets, solid will be a lowercase s in brackets, and aqueous will be a lowercase aq in brackets. Firstly, we will cover how to find the states of elements on their own. Hofbrinkel is an acronym that stands for hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. We use the acronym to remember our diatomic molecules, but they also help us remember their states. What's a diatomic molecule? A regular atom is found on its own, but a diatomic molecule is composed of two atoms, hence the prefix di, meaning two, and the word atomic, meaning atom, diatomic, two atoms. In life, the elements of Hofbrinkel are always found in pairs. Since they are diatomic, their subscripts will always be two, representing two atoms. Now, what are the states of Hofbrinkel? All elements in Hofbrinkel are gases, excluding iodine, which is a solid, and bromine, which is a liquid. How would we write them out? Hydrogen would be written as H, its element symbol, with a subscript of 2 because it's diatomic, and a subscript of G in brackets to show that it's a gas. All the other gaseous elements would be written the exact same, the only difference being their element symbols. Iodine would be written as I, its element symbol, with a subscript of 2 because it's diatomic, and a subscript of S in brackets to show that it's a solid. Finally, bromine would be written as BR, its element symbol, with a subscript of 2 because it's diatomic, and a subscript of L in brackets to show that it's a liquid. Now what about the states of the rest of the elements that are not part of Hofbrinkel? Typically, if they are found in the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals, the transition metals, or metalloids, they are solids, with the exception of mercury, which is a liquid. All noble gases, which are found in group 18, are gases. The rest are also solids, excluding nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, which are gases. If the elements are not part of Hofbrinkel, they are not diatomic, so you would only write out the element symbol and the state as a subscript in brackets. For example, magnesium would be written as Mg with a subscript of S in brackets. Now, how do we find the states of compounds? Compounds are either aqueous or they are found as a solid, usually a solid precipitate. You can figure out the state by using the solubility rules. Looking at the table, you can see that there are three sections, the ions, their solubility, and their exceptions. If it is soluble, it is aqueous. If it is insoluble, it is a solid. If it is soluble but part of the compound is an exception, it is a solid. If it is insoluble but part of the compound is an exception, it's aqueous. First, let's look at some examples in the soluble section to see what their state would be. Let's take potassium chloride as an example. To find out its state, you would find potassium in the ion section. We see that potassium is part of the alkali metals, and according to the table, it is soluble since there are no exceptions. This means that potassium chloride is soluble, which means it's aqueous. Here's a different example. Calcium sulfate would be a solid. Here's why. According to the table, sulfates are soluble. However, calcium is part of the exceptions, meaning that the compound would be insoluble, overall making it a solid. Now, let's look at some examples in the insoluble section to see what their state would be. Calcium phosphate would be a solid because phosphates are insoluble and calcium is not found in the exceptions. Sodium hydroxide would be aqueous because hydroxides are insoluble. However, alkali metals are exceptions and sodium is part of the alkali metals. And that's figuring out states explained quickly. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chem videos. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next.